day out here at Doncaster East. I'm pretty wrapped that they've put the centre square, the centre circle over on this mm. uh, near side of the ground, yep. right in front of the faithful, right in front of the congregation. It's not too far that we're going to be uh, getting underway here with the Ruckman just uh, making their way to position here. Jared Smith will be starting off in the ruck. Doncaster East kicking down towards the Reynolds Road end of the ground. Yeah, exactly right. The scoreboard end as it is on the on the uh, right hand side of your dial, radio dial. Saravolo got the first possession away there to White, who was stripped of the footy, and he wants the free kick. And the umpire says, "Play the advantage." Saravolo launches the ball forward. It uh, it's close to the goal, just off target. First score on the board for Doncaster East, a behind kick by Aaron Saravolo, and that didn't take too long at all. Straight out of the middle, less than half a minute gone in the first quarter with uh, Jared Bayliss, the uh, coach, of course, playing coach of the Park Orchard side, to bring the ball back into play. Puts it to that outer side of the ground, to the half-back position. Quick handball is on. Park Orchard swarm forward now. The target there was Folks, and he's taken the mark. Gets uh, dumped after he's marked it. And the umpire rushes in to say that that will be a 25-metre penalty as well. And as a result, Park Orchards will make no mistake here and kick the first goal of the game. He's such a presence, folks, isn't he? I mean, he's an enormous man. You just saw him there take the ball. And I'm not sure who's playing on him today, but they're going to have their, uh, their work cut out. It's going to be a big day for them. First goal on the board for Park Orchards, kicked by Michael Folks. That 25-metre penalty took what was a, uh, a likely goal into a certain goal, and uh, it gives Park Orchards a five-point lead. Uh, a minute and a half gone in the first quarter. <laughs> So just making our way back into the middle here. Just doing a bit of a reshuffle in the caravan at the moment. So the Sharks that have the early lead. Rucks go at it, a good knock down there by Smith that time. Batsanas couldn't chime in over the top there. Nice little fist on there by Tenla. Ball hits the deck, a lot of players around this one. Comes out, James Locke got the handball out to Tenla. Look backwards, had support there. The kick around the body by Brock McLean up towards the half forward line. Nicely chopped off though by Benny Hyde. Across the half back line, Park Orchard squeeze a kick out. Here's Matty George who just stops props and looking for the best option. Short, short one is on. The mark's been taken by Winert. So, big inclusion for Park Orchards this year. The old Croydon spearhead kicks it up towards the wing position. Nicholson just couldn't quite trap it at the crucial stage. Jager was there and right on top of his hammer was Pavic and Stanton now and we will have a bounce. Just really interesting too to see Brendan Winant playing at the back. I think he's been playing there for most of the season, but as you say, a spearhead, but uh, playing at the back. He's only kicked one goal for the year, so his primary position is up back. Jack Martin, centre half back now for the Lions, wants to switch the play. It was a skew of kick, but an accurate one because Sammy Gold takes the mark this way, that way. Stops, props, spots up a target along the win position there in Tendler, who got it away to Lowther, who just had enough on the handball to spot up Locke. Short passes on, kicked it straight into the bum there of Appleby across the half forward line. Locke will go in after it again. Lee Murphy was there to mop up, got the handball away. That was okay. Sarah Volo got dispossessed. Well done there by Heron, got the handball away. Kick goes in towards the middle of the ground. It scrambles out. Goal for Doncaster Reese, the first player to mop up. Got the handball backwards to Tendler, who goes backwards again, and they'll steady it here. Simon White across the half back line. Yeah, Simon White, cool head as always, just uh, he won't panic. Sums up the right option and goes very short back to Tendler, who's had a few touches early in this game. Jason Tendler goes laterally to Martin. Martin's handball to Gold. Gold's kick just uh, carried nicely over the head then of Whitnish and landed in the arms of Gordon. Gordon goes back in board. Found a teammate who, go, who put it in short. McLean rushes forward from the wing position, drives it to the pocket. Big leap, what a mark! Oh. Terrific grab taken, coming from behind there, and uh, the kick didn't do him any favours, but in the end, the mark was perfectly held. Uh, right in the forward pocket there, the big leap from behind, and uh, successfully taken. So we're just seeking clarification on who the... Uh, we the player who's taken the We don't the have a number is. 10, so uh, we're not sure. Difficult shot for goal, up against the boundary. Kick looks nope. not so good, drifts across the face of goal, and a minus score there for Doncaster East. 
So the uh, spectacular mark, but uh, no goal kicked for Doncaster East. And that takes them onto two behinds. Park Orchards at one goal as Bateless brings the ball back in for Park Orchards. Puts it out towards the wing position. Smith dished off the handball, paddled along the ground. Kick comes forward. A lot of players swarm in over the footy. And uh, they dive in now over the ball, so it will be a ball up. And a little bit of push and shove, but uh, no, no, uh, no further score at this stage. Doncaster East, two behinds. Park Orchards, one goal on the board. Ball spills out. Quick kick tumbles forward, and it has gone through for a goal. And once again, it's the, our uh, mystery man, number 10, who's kicked the goal there for Doncaster East. Gets him off to... Hisham Kerbatay. Thanks very much for that. Yeah, Hisham uh, Kerb Kerbatay. That's what we'll go with. And uh, what a mark he took a couple of minutes ago. And then he's kicked a great goal there for Doncaster East as well. So they're first on the board. One goal, two. Park Orchards are one goal straight on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Yeah, Park Orchards doing a lot of defending early. They've been under a lot of pressure. They've held that reasonably well, but uh, they'll be looking to get uh, a couple more inside 50s because they haven't had much so far. VFL-listed player playing in the colours of Doncaster East. Ball in the middle, snap out towards the half-forward line, bouncing, bouncing, right in front of the Park Orchards faithful. And over she goes for a boundary throw-in. Big crowd ensembled out here as Zerbys get down here. Otherwise, stay tuned. 98.1 Radio East and streaming live around the globe. EFL.org.au, including in Singapore this afternoon. Brad Bird watching on. Get a birdie as the ball across the half back line now for Park Orchards. They squeeze to kick out there through Haythorn. It might just sit up nicely there for Nick Hanley. It does. Had a little bit of time. Got the handball back in. Back to Haythorn. Little neat kick into the middle. That was okay. And the mark's been taken. And now they'll switch the ball into the middle nice now. Kick. They've got a bit of a run here. Here's Whitney's drop. What he should have taken off to the races. Good recovery, got the handball away, streaming through his Bayless on the right boot, bouncing football. And only threw for one behind, and there might have been a whistle here for a push. Is it coming back? No, Leroy Green's right on top of this one with the camera work, but it might be a downfield free kick, in fact, oh. it is. So Matty Nicholson uh, looks like Dan Beards, the general down there, the umpire. So ball in the arms of Nicholson on a very tight angle it looks like he'll go for the snap here so they currently lead this uh, currently trail by two points they held the lead for the first few moments they'll be looking to gain it back here it uh, perfectly executed there and the Park Orchard Sharks have their second goal on the board Matty Nicholson has his first and on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard as we cross the seven and a half minute mark in this first term it's pretty close out here 12 plays eight yeah, nice build up from Park Orchards. Nick Hanley just sweeping across half back, setting it up nicely and uh, a nice finish. So, four point lead to Park Orchards and uh, their second goal then kicked by Matt Nicholson as the ball comes back to the middle. Eight minutes gone in the first quarter. Pupkin Stanton now contested that ruck hit out. Kick forward by Bayless, tumbles it forward. Martin there at the back. Had his kick well, smothered ball was fed back to Folks. the kick around the corner by Folks it bounces across the face of goal and that's not a bad result though for park orchards because better better than brett to uh to get the boundary throw in right alongside the behind post than if it had just managed to creep through for a behind absolutely you know they can set up their structure and hopefully win the uh, the clearance and set something up make the defenders nervous when it's in that part of the ground handball was shot out by appleby mclean gave it to gold the kick was kept very low then Whitnish takes possession high up and under kick didn't do his teammates any favors and there's a free kick and it will go the way of Simon White for Doncaster East who is a uh, great user of the footy really doesn't hit a target that wasn't his best kick still got to Summers on the bounce Summers kick around the corner is a good one and he lands on the chest of Cerevolo right in front of our broadcast position here at Zerby's Reserve. Uh, the perfect handball receive uh, over to me, Brad, but the kick wasn't good to his skipper in Batsanis. Over the boundary line it goes and out of bounds. Four-point ball game. Sharks kicking downhill. Doncaster East kicking to the scoreboard end. Umpire 
to, to bring the ball back in. Nice little knockdown front spot there by Chapel. Kick goes forward though for Doncaster East. Didn't quite have the, st uh, the front spot there was Hish, but it came out, it came out, scooped out to Handley, who went out wide. Nice little spoil there by Cod Miller, who couldn't quite trap it at the last stage. And over the boundary line she goes, uh, King Wright on his hammer. Josh, Josh, sorry BW, is Josh Chapel very prominent early for Park, which is in the ruck? His games have been, been played at a very quick speed as well, which is good to see. Certainly is. Hi to bring the ball back in now. Chapel will go up against Papak and Stanton now. Charging through was Appleby. He was quickly wrapped up and will have a bounce right across the 50 here. Doncaster East End. They're trailing Park Orchards by four points on EFL game day. Ten minutes into the first term, came down. Appleby just scrambled to kick forward. That worked out okay. Here's Hish again this way, that way. Little handball to lock, squeeze to kick forward. Murphy kept it in alive just for a second, though, because he was pushed over by Alex Galings and will have a boundary throwing 20 metres out from the Doncaster East goal line. Ball to come back into play. Gordon goes up that time. Probably will give him the knockdown. Ball hits the deck. And we will have another bounce. I think Chapel was robbed here at BWS. I'm pretty sure he got that one. But, uh... You just worry about <laughs> chiming in for special comments, not corrections. Besto as it comes out now. Haythorn tried to barge his way through. Galings also. Barry Cotts has got some scores going around the grounds. Yes, we've got some Division 3 scores. The Basin 3-1-19, Charlie Donvale 4-3-27. Warrandyte, three goals straight to Churnside Park, two goals straight 12. And the Waverley Blues, one goal six to Fentry Gully, one behind. Lock had a fresh air shot, brought to ground strongly. Umpire said play on. Gordon got a little quick kick straight into the, uh, the guts of Chrome. Murphy now, which way will this one bounce? He was off kilter and it goes through for a behind. That's three now for the Doncaster East Football Club. Bendigo Bank scoreboard, 11 and a half minutes gone. They trail by three Park Orchards. They're kicking straight. So Bayless to bring the ball back in once again for Park Orchards. Thumping kick all the way to half back. Big pack of players flew for it. Ball came down to ground. They dive in over the top and you can see there Appleby had uh, opponent, uh, the opponent there in Galings uh, possibly in his back. But the umpire was right there on the scene and felt that there was nothing wrong with it. So tosses it up once again. Gordon this time won the ruck contest out towards the boundary it will be another boundary throw in out of sight of Zerby's reserve Gordon competing in the ruck against Chapel late inclusion into the team Josh Chapel today and ball shot out into the path of Price Inglis who was stripped of the footy still got his kick in Taking possession was George. George's kick carried over the head of Smead and over the boundary line just in front of the interchange area for Doncaster East on the outer side of Zerbys. So boundary throw in, Gordon to go up against Chapel. Gordon won the tap into the hands though of George for Park Orchards who tumbles it forward. Smead stripped of the footy. Good strong tackle by AUB. Will he be rewarded for it? No, the umpire said it was held to him. No prior opportunity. Once again, a ball up. So a bit of a stalemate at the moment. Mm. Three point lead for Park Orchards. Ball stuck on that outer side of Zerby's reserve. There's the quick kick by Bayless. Drives it forward. It's really to a two on one, which favoured Doncaster East. Nick Price Inglis tries to get away from Good his pursuer and he finds Philp. Lovely pass then from Jacob Price Inglis. He had Jack Shalakis right behind him, pressuring him all the time. And he still had the uh, presence of mind and the uh, execution to hit up Michael Philp, who is a long kick for goal, can kick a long goal. And uh, I'm going to back him in here, BWS. So it's pretty well straight in front, Michael Philp. Back into the team this week. Missed the last game for Park Orchards. Yep. And he's kicked the goal. So three goals, uh, two goals on the board now for Park Orchards. Three goals, sorry, on the board for Park Orchards. Michael Philp has his first. 
and uh, just opens up a handy buffer 14 minutes gone in this first quarter. It'll be interesting to see how Jared Bayless um, spends where he spends his time today because he has been going forward and a couple of the big men out, particularly Prosdek, but he, so far he's been a lot, spent a lot of the time down back and through the midfield. So it be interesting to see if he pushes forward at some stage. Oh, you always got to stick by family, don't you, Brad? So the umpire restarts it now. They double the score of Doncaster East Park Orchards in the early stages of this game. Yeah, but he didn't prove me wrong. I backed him in to kick it, and he did exactly that. <laughs> exactly. I had to restart this one here. Chapel versus Gordon. I'll give that one to Chapel, or best I'll tell me otherwise. As Murphy dives on the football, gets knocked out the back. Lucas was in there on hands and knees. Jeez, he's a doppelganger for James Appleby and vice versa. Lucas goes after it again. Ayubi searching handball for the scooper in Batsanis, who just got pinged at the last stage. It looked like he got a hand on the ball, but the umpire was right on the money. Smeed on the right boot, kicks the ball inside the forward right 50. What a fantastic kick and lead as well as Daniel Gorringe comes down and takes a solid mark he's about 45 meters out when he kicks from uh, not the toughest of angles but about 45 degree angles even speed looking really lively he was a late inclusion obviously he didn't uh, not initially selected but he's done some good things and that was a beautiful kick what a pickup Daniel Goring has been for the Sharks this year comes in now leans over the ball and they are kicking straight the Sharks there is no doubt about that they are off and running 16 minutes gone on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard and they have four straight goals Doncaster East 139 on EFL game day 98.1 Radio Eastern and streaming live around the globe he just read my mind best that's exactly what I was thinking he wasn't named in the original I'm team I, I had to break it to you guys but I had the mail him and Chapel were always playing I think the Sharks were playing mind games with the Lions well, he's uh, been absolutely on fire in this first quarter, and I think he, he, the way he's played so far, you'd expect that he'd be a, an automatic selection in the, uh, the Park Orchards team. He's been, as we said, really lively, set up that last goal, but he's just been involved in everything so far. So back in the middle, Smith up against Chapel. Smith won the tap, not decisively though, into the path of Locke. Locke's kick was intercepted by Wynett. Ball bounces into towards the uh, forward 50 of Park Orchards. The clearing kick by Lowther was a good one. Hit his teammate on the chest in Appleby. Appleby's kicked a full forward. No mark taken. They dodge a bullet here. The Sharks handily steadies, although it's a poor kick. It did stay inside the field of play, only just. And as a result, will be a boundary throw in. Keep the scores coming in this afternoon via Twitter at Footy EFL. Barry Cotts working uh, around the grounds today. Both Ruckman go to ground there. That was all very uh, clumsy and untidy looking. And the umpire pulled a free kick out of it, which has gone the way of big Jared Smith for Doncaster East. What's he like as a kick for goal, oh, BWS? Well, it's pretty cluttered in there. I think the distance is beyond him here. He didn't have, uh, it up. Didn't have any confidence. He just puts it to... About 25 metres out from goal. Quick clearing kick into the path of Nicholson. Smith got to it first though, was immediately wrapped up by Nicholson. And it will be a ball up. And uh, Jared Smith involved pretty heavily at the moment. He had the, la he had the last kick, he was tackled then and now goes for the ruck contest. And he's got another free kick. Interesting. So Man Mountain, Jared Smith towers above those players around him on the field just at the moment. Maybe he might back himself in this time. Long way out, probably even further out this time for goal, but he does launch it, gives it all he's got. It's just manages to, uh, oh, in fact, it's gone out of bounds on the full that kick. So free kick to uh, to Park Orchards in the back pocket with Galings. Yeah, I don't know, it looked like it snuck through. I think it definitely went through for a behind, but nonetheless, Barry Cotts around the grounds with the score centre. Yes, Division 3, Donvale, 5-3-33 to the Basin, 5-2-32. Warrandyke, 5-3-33 to Jernside Park, who got two goals straight, 12. And Furniture Gully and Waverley Blues, Waverley Blues, 2-1-13. Furniture Gully, three behind, three points. Hitting time on across the Eastern Football League today, Divisions 2, 3 and 4. Keep the scores coming through on Twitter, at footy EFL, the kick goes up towards 
towards the wing position. Here's Smeed again. Runs around, winds around on the right boot. Good oh, kick oh. up towards our forward line. Nicholson, he had courage, but he also had support there in folks who might just ping one from the boundary. No, he pushes it to the left-hand side and it's just stayed inside the paint. So a boundary throw-in will ensue about 20 metres out from goal, Matt. I get, I've given him the benefit of the doubt there. I think he was trying to hit Gorringe one-on-one on, one on one in the square. You'd probably back Gorringe most times. So the umpire to bring the ball back in. 19 and a half gone, 15 point lead to the Sharks and we'll have a restart on that one. So just wait for the ball to be brought back in once again. Deep in the park orchards, 50, looking for their fifth straight. Bit of a bit of an arm wrestle at the fall, the ball that came, bowled there by, came out from Shalakas and couldn't hit up his teammate there in Hish and it goes over the boundary line and over again. 25 metres out. A lot of players inside this forward 50 there. A little knock on there by Gorringe over the back. Ball hits the deck. Smith got boot to ball, but it was quickly smothered. A handball out by McLean. That was intercepted. Folks handball again. Backwards to go forwards. Barging his way through Hayhaw and got it away just in the nick of time. That was okay. He's lock on the left boot now up towards the wing position. And there was a not enough talk there. And the faithful's getting uh, right into this one. There'll be a few of those old footstep type calls, but we'll have a boundary throw in right in front of us here in the broadcast position. You give to me, I give to you, Brad Henderson. <laughs> boundary thrown back into play. Smith throws it on the boot. Galings got the handball away to Price Inglis. And uh, his kick to the wing position. Car just uh, getting hands to it then was Bahagia. White's handball clears the area nicely for Doncaster East. White kicked it off the ground that time, but it was intercepted by Whitnish. Nice. Whitnish launches the ball forward. Came off hands to Philp. Philp off a step. Fires oh. at the goals, but he's off target this time and can't kick his second goal off the first quarter. Just a minor score there. That's their first behind Park Orchards. 4 1 25. Doncaster East a one goal, 3 9 on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Looks like Josh Chappell's having a spell on the ruck. We've had folks in there not in recent times, so just having a bit of a break. And I think also the big man, uh, Goring, as well. So, gold from the kick in, found Lowther in the back pocket. And he used the grandstand side and he's going to head towards the Jake Summers direction who put his hand up for it. Ball hits the deck. Lock was nicely met there by Benny Hyde with a strong tackle to bring him to ground and we'll have a ball up. 22 minutes tick over. 16 point lead here to Park Orchards. Probably came into this game as the underdog although a lot of the media team have gone the Sharks today. Sarah Volo got it out. That was okay. Little uh, flick kick out there. Comes to Appleby on the right boot. Squeezed it up towards the scoreboard. Racing out there was Rowland. He had too much pace there for Lee Murphy. Hit it and then went up towards the wing position. Martin got one handle on it. He was intercepted though by Nicholson who went after it. Smead was there for support. Strong tackle by Nathan Tenler. Sees the ball go over the boundary line. Out of bounds right in front of Steve Buckle and Anna Doldy. And the gas as well out there. Great play by Scotty Rell and they came and got the intercept but not such a good kick but so showing his experience at the back. Bit harsh on the kick there. Best though. Going 50 metres and almost got it onto the, or almost got on the chest target, of the uh, target though, Matty. Jesus Christ. Get your kicking boots on, Best though, at half time. <laughs> Give us a show. Right, now it's uh, being thrown back in in front of the Park Orchards bench. We can see Jared Wright, who we had a chat with on game day before this match as well. I throws it in, little handball out. Batsanas just tried to link up with Lucas, who got dispossessed, charging through their hay horn. Brought to ground and we'll have another bounce. Update from Mulgrave, 2 2 14 Mulgrave, Croydon 2 1 13. Expect that one to be a close one all afternoon. I throws it up. A quick kick forward. Still just on centre wing position there. White and Murphy laying a tackle and we'll have a bounce. Wayne Brasher texting in with some special comments. Donny East half forward line looking very lethargic at the moment. As the umpire will restart this one once again. To see Jason Tenler back in the team as well. 
wasn't in the seniors when we called them a, a few weeks ago out of Bayswater. Whitling look away handball to Tenla that time on the right boot. This is Nita. Here's Lee Murphy out in front. Club champion back at the den this year. Links back up there with Whitling on the left boot inside forward. 50 towards the Hisham direction. Couldn't quite take the mark. Hayhorn, he's had a bit of the football. Left boot out of that danger zone. It was got enough purchase on it as well. White took the mark, but it was touched off the boot. So Smeed's there. He's in there and under, and he gets the handball away. Couldn't quite link up there, George, but he did have time. Gets the direction from the bench to go long up towards the half forward line, but the Lions do have the numbers loud. They got the handball away to Batsanis. We'll go after it again. They've been dispossessed. Wiggins on the right boot goes forward and he puts it through. That's five on the Bendigo back scoreboard now to the Park Orchard Sharks. They are on fire early in this game on EFL game day and they lead 5 one Doncaster East, one three nine. Matt Fodia. Yeah, well, if we go back to what Brash has texted you in there about the half forward lines, you look at the way that Park Orchards have been able to get out of defence so easily and then there Doncaster East had four to one or two maybe there on their half back line and the pressure from those two Sharks forwards has led to another goal. Well 25 minutes gone in the first quarter here and it is a 22 point lead to Park Orchards. They have well and truly come out of the blocks firing today. 5-1-31 to 1-3-9 as Whitnish is tackled. Strong tackle applied and it will be a ball up. Yeah, Park, very Park, far that time. Parkour just looking a lot harder around the ball, aren't they? I mean, the 50-50 contest, they're going in there and they're winning the bulk of them, and that's been a big success for them in this first quarter. Strong tackle applied again, this time by Shalakis. He's had a quiet start to the game. Jack Shalakis hasn't been able to weave any magic so far, as he usually does. Chapel won the tap, didn't go far. Quick kick by Murphy. Haythorn got a hand to it. Ball spilled clear though. Bursting away then was uh, Kabatier. Got it off to his teammate then uh, who uh, kicked at the goal. Jake Whitling. Jake Whitling wearing the number 12. Not used to that. The left footer. And uh, he was off target then, Jake Whitling. So they need a goal here, Doncaster East, before quarter time. That would have been a handy one. Well, there's still time, but that means there's still time for the Sharks to move forward where they lead here up towards the wing position knocked forward it's going to work out nicely here here's Whitney she's off to the races kick up towards the half forward line the lines have got back there White put his body on the line nicely done loud they got the handball away to Tendler off to Cod Miller on the left oh. boot he's coughed it up straight down the throat of Nicholson who pops it up to the goal square which way will it oh. bounce has gone through really? that is goal number six for Park Orchards a costly turnover that's his second of the term Matty Nicholson and Park Orchards, wow, they are going to take some beating. This is, at, the floodgates have actually opened early in this game. It's just the pressure, absolutely the pressure that they're putting on and, and, and Donny used to getting really rattled and that was a shocking kick, but it was all just brought about by the pressure. Well, can they click in the gear, Doncaster East? They just look, uh, as you say, rattled and, and quite shell-shocked at the moment in this first term. Don, Doncaster East have uh, been a little bit wasteful, one goal, four. Park oh. Orchards are making every opportunity a winner. Six goals, one on the board for them. As Locke was well wrapped up then in the tackle. It's just something lacking at the moment for Doncaster East in terms of the intensity around the footy. Batsanis there trying to lift his side. Are they possibly not running both ways? Because every time Park Orchards get the ball in defence, they are just burning off the Lions players. It does seem quite easy when Park Orchards get get uh, clear in space. They seem to be doing it easy at the moment. Murphy well wrapped up then in the tackle. Umpire tosses it up. Chapel oh. left very high. Pretty obvious free kick given away then against uh, Josh Chapel. Almost got a piggy free piggy back there. And the free kick will go to Smith. That's his third free kick in this first quarter. Third free kick four for Jared Smith. Lovely pass. Hits Murphy on the chest. And they need to move it pretty quickly here. There's not a lot of time left, you wouldn't think, in this first term. Murphy launches it forward. Not really favouring his side, though. Gee, there was a lot of Park Orchards numbers under that footy, and they were pretty... Uh, it was pretty easy then to just pick it off and take it to the boundary line. 
Jared Wright spoke about structures as being a focus this year at Park Orchard. Josh Chappell gave away that free kick, had a bit of it to do with the umpire, and then sprinted back into the hole. That was really impressive. Smith had the knockdown at the fall. The ball hide was right there, did really well. On the right boot, snapped it out of that danger zone across the 50. One-on-one -on -one contest is there. Pabak and Stanton now wrapping up nicely there, James King, and we'll have a bounce. Barry Cotts around the grounds with the school oh. centre as the siren sounds to announce quarter time out here. 37 plays 10. It's almost a five-goal lead to Park Orchards over Don.